Welcome to the car guys and this week another new car day. We are here at Stephen Eagle Toyota, there's your clue, to pick up a brand new car. Mr Jason, what could it possibly be? It's a new Igo. Is it? It's a new Hilux truck, right? Of course it's not those things. We're here of course to pick up our second GR Yaris. That's right, we love it so much we bought two of them. I mean, why wouldn't you? You've got to have a matching pair. That's right, it's the dynamic duo, <laughs> two GR Yaris's. Batman and Robin. You're Robin. <laughs> Okay, so it's time. Let's go into Stephen Eagle and pick up the new car and see it for the first time. Let's do this. We've got it outside the dealership in the blazing sunshine. There it is. It's on the road. It's ready to be taken. As you can see, I went for a black one. I was going to go for a red one but unfortunately it was going to take about another seven or eight months. So I said, no, I'll have the original black one, please. And I have to say, it looks mean as hell. So Jason, we've taken the car away from the dealership and found some interesting snickety driver's roads to take a blast on. We parked up here in this field just to really reflect on exactly what I've done. Yeah, what have you done? <laughs> I've bought a black one of these. these but jason the question on everyone's lips mm. the whole channel's buzzing with it oh where the hell have you been oh <laughs> soz people i've been off work's been really busy summer crap summer yeah i know so but i'm giving it all that uh, but i am now back I, and this is it now. are you back this is it we're back now <laughs> you're back today but is that it <laughs> yeah and then that's going to be it we'll see you after christmas thanks yeah. guys see ya cheers another two months <laughs> now you were well, one of the first people in the UK to get a GR Yaris. Absolutely. And I remember, it, I remember it vividly. What was it then that made you put down your deposit in sort of February 20, not having known much about the car at all? As you all know, I'm, I'm obsessed with rally cars. And all I'd seen was a sneaky little video of like the rear quarter of one. Yeah, like projected with a rally exactly, car Exactly, yeah. And yeah. you were like, wow, that's, a, that's very odd and a bit quirky looking. Phone up Danny down at Stephen Eagle, get in touch with Craig down there as well, find out if I can get one of these things, slap the deposit down, and really didn't know what was going to be. Because it was a bit ballsy, wasn't it? Because, it, yeah. you know, Toyota was sort of like going, oh, look, we're going to be launching a rally car for the road. It could have turned out badly. Because Toyota, let's be honest, fairly safe over the last 30 years. Very much so. Fairly safe, designed for the uh, older people in the community. Is there anything in the Toyota range apart from this that we would even consider? Um, no. No, I don't believe there is. Yeah. Now, but although, you know, Supra. Ah, Supra. You know, I've done this before with TVRs. You know, I put some money down on a Tomorrow and that thing turned up and I was like, <laughs> no, thank you very much, gentlemen. You can keep that. So, <laughs> you know, I've been here before and then the thing turned up and, oh, it just lit a fire under the entire automotive industry. Oh, it really did. There wasn't it? one person that went, nah, I'm not really keen on it. Oh, yeah. no, Jethro Boddington said he, he didn't drive, drove more like a Subaru than a... Oh, he's just no, trying no. to be controversial. Yeah. I mean, everyone Literally loved it. Literally everybody. All the press, all the Yule Chalbers, yeah. everyone that you can possibly imagine yeah. says it's like literally the next coming. And you did I don't even think you believed it. No. And we, and we went down skeptical. to Octane, we did that video, and you went, you took it out for a drive, and you literally got out and you went, right, I'm going to have one. It's the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to buy one. You got yours in October when the, when yep. the car was launched. You literally had the first one. Then all the press reviews came. Everyone said it was amazing. The waiting list started to shoot up. I got in Cocky as soon stick. as possible, <laughs> slapped down the money, and I was like, right, I'm going to get one uh, by February. So it was February 21 yep. was going to be my delivery yep. date. And I was like, yes, I've just got in there. And then after that, it, it started, you know, it was like September 2022. And obviously now yep. it's 2023. In fact... That might be it. That might be. I think that's it. Know, if you try and get one now, I honestly don't think you're going to be able to get one at all. You're going to have to buy a used one. So mm. there's 25,000 cars across the entire globe. Yeah. And they've sold out in less than a year. In less than a year. 
Then I got a phone call that said, ah, uh, Toyota's kind of ballsed up the allocations for the UK. I mean, I personally think it was that flipping ship that crashed in the Panama Canal or whatever. <laughs> That's probably half of it. But either way, they said, well, I'm afraid it's going to be December 2021. And I was like, ah, I sort of thought, do I, should I cancel it? Should I just not bother? And I thought, no, I'll keep my foot in. But as it turned out, and it's arrived now in September. In September. So yeah. a little bit earlier than expected, still later than I thought, but it's here now. It's here now. Look at it in all its glory. And um, I have to say, I am loving this black paint. It's good, isn't it? It's so, it's got so much depth to it. It's not flat black. It's very sparkly in the yep. sunshine. Yep. And I think it really sets off the car. I actually think I prefer it. Really? Yeah, because all of these... But you've got pearlescent white. Yeah, but these accoutrements that are in black is I'm not... I, I, that more subtle. I think okay. that's a bit more subtle. I think also what I like about the black is you haven't got these big contrast areas like you've got. Yeah. So a lot of people say that, that your car looks like a Stormtrooper's helmet. Oh. And there's some truth in that. There is. But with the black one, you don't have the contrast. So... It, I think it's far more harmonious. It's a lot neater. This back particularly, where you've got that big slab of lights that sort of cuts in and then the roof flowing down onto that rear spoiler. Whereas here, it's all black, so it kind of works. So I'm not... Yeah, and I feel the same way about the front. That, that you've got, because it's all blended together, I actually think that's a, it, it looks nicer like that. So Jason, you've had your car for a little under a year. Mm -hmm. I've just picked up mine. I'm I'm all sparkly and yeah. fresh and new and free with the joys of a new car. Yeah. Tell me uh, what you don't like about your car having owned mm. it. There's a couple of things that, that get on your nerves. The first thing is that silly screen. This screen? The silly screen in the middle. They could have put it further down. I think that would have been a bit better. People say that it's because of the screen that you can't see out, so your vision with is, is impaired. But it's actually not the screen that's the problem. It's actually the rear view mirror that gets in the way. So you have this letterbox, which is fine when you're going quick and you're concentrating hard, but manoeuvring around town could be a real pain. The steering's a bit dull and a bit heavy when you're just pottering around normally. Mm. But that's really, I have to be honest, I'm splitting hairs here. I mean, on the plus side, four-wheel drive it looks pretty decent and cool and mean it's a nice little yep. squat shape i'm loving the carbon roof yeah it's got lots of rally tech in there yeah sophisticated suspension you can go out on a drive right regardless of what the weather's like yeah and you can have three different completely different experiences front wheel drive rear wheel drive and four wheel drive if people are going to go oh you're talking a load of old crap trust me you can absolutely feel the difference Handy. in the way the car handles. So if you want a bit of push on understeer, yeah. stick it, leave it in normal mode, off you go. You can get it into the corners, get a bit of push on understeer and pull yourself out. If you fancy a little bit of squirrely back end, stick it into sport mode. Honestly, it is a car of different personalities. I mean, you're all about the squirrely back end. I love a squirrely back end. <laughs> and it's surprising how many people that have got like high-end supercar collections and then they've got one yeah. of these. A lot of people in the know, a lot of proper keen drivers, people who really know their stuff about cars have actually got these. And what I've noticed, which is very interesting, so there's, like you say, there's 25,000 of them made, but the residuals, you know, the value of these things is rock solid, even though there's <laughs> yeah. that many. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, mean you can sell this for about the same as you paid for it. Yeah, I doubt I would lose more than a couple of hundred quid. I mean, what? it's incredible, really. Base car is under 30. Under 30. Track pack one like these ones. 33 and a half. 33, yeah. 2023 is the last allocation that's going to come. People are going to start fighting over them. And actually, you've managed to keep this in quite good condition since Why it's you. Why would you say it like that? Why well, you... considering it's you, yeah. there's not too many scratches, dents and bangs on it. No, I, I had, there, there actually aren't any. <laughs> uh, I've even managed to not curb the wheels. We've got two of these now in the car goes out. What do you think we're going to do with it, with these cars going forward? We've got to do something interesting. We've got to do something fun, haven't we? I don't think we can do a rally stage in them. Can't we? Well, can unless we? it's tarmac. Can we? Are you going to PPF yours? I was thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, is this PPF? No. So I was thinking about getting PPF'd, but um, unfortunately, my local PPF place is the same place that another YouTuber takes his cars and then they never phone me back. Oh, awkward. <laughs> I'm actually incredibly excited about this. Yeah. I think it's a lovely little 
puppy of a car. It's just really eager to go. Everyone's rumour at the moment is that, you know, Toyota's not making a penny on any of these cars because they cost so much to actually make, because so special. And to me, it feels like the modern version of the Lancia Delta Integrale. Wow. That's what I like about it. It's got that really nice... What is it? Is it B-road a... capability, yeah. you know, can do anything, can take any corner at any speed. That's really what I like about it the most. I mean, I've seen... I mean, some people have managed to, like, pitch them off of roads and stuff. I'm, like, thinking, how the hell did you do that? <laughs> I think it's called backing drive. off. <laughs> it's crazy. The amount of, you know, the amount of, sort of, capability that this thing has of going round a corner. I have no idea how those blokes who drove off the bling bank at an illegal car meet and almost took out three spectators. I don't know how the hell they did that's, that. That's called uh, lift off oversteer. There's so much gadgets in there. That's the thing, in some ways for me, that's the shame is that there's so much tech in it. I, right. I don't want it to have any of that tech. Like I don't need so many buttons to turn off before I actually set off. That is a morning. that is a downside. Yeah. It, I mean, um, it, it is a normal Toyota in that respect. White line Probably assists not. crossing. Yeah. A lot of assistance. Assistance. Yeah. It's very quiet. So the only thing that makes a noise is the speakers. If is you that, open so the is windows... That, is that growl coming from the speakers yeah, then? Yeah, absolutely. Because I quite like the growl. Yeah, it's coming straight out the speakers. Is it? Outside the car, it's like... Oh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, it means that you can... Feel a bit dirty. You can absolutely have it down your local B road. Yeah, but it's, it's playing a, it's playing a soundtrack never... of, of a rally car noise. It's like yeah. having a best of, best but, of RAC rally hit four but you liked in the it. CD. You liked it till I told you. So we've had a walk around... We've assessed the situation. The only thing to do now is to go out for a first ever drive in this car. Here we go then, the first drive in the GR Yaris. Just got to get it out of this field first. Obviously, uh, because it's four wheel drive, that shouldn't be a problem. And then we're going to go for a nice little route around these quite beautiful country roads in Suffolk. And Damien's going to follow me. I can't tell you how excited I am about this car. It's amazing, really. I mean, it is a Toyota Yaris, for goodness sake. And yet, the changes that have been made by Gazoo Racing and the Mackinnon boys, it's just transformed this car. Both in terms of actual ability, but also in terms of image and profile. Everyone wants one of these cars. Super excited for Damien and picking up his Yaris. I actually think don't tell him this, I actually think this is going to be a car in the collection that he is going to get the most enjoyment from. So first impressions, yes I am sitting higher than you would expect in a car. I've cranked this seat operation all the way down to the bottom, uh, but there is not a lot of room here. Everything is very black and austere in here. Everything is obviously dominated by that enormous tablety screen. Now I've got conventional dials up ahead, which I'm very thankful for. You can have a bit too much of this digital business, can't you? And the steering wheel is a gratifying to hold three-spoked affair, which has quite too many buttons on it. And the only annoying thing about those is that all the safety features turn themselves on every time you start the car. So every time you get in your GR Yaris, you have to turn off that white lane assist button. You have to turn off the stop start. All those systems have got to be done by hand every time, which is a little bit annoying, particularly that white lane thing, because that is something that affects the way you drive the car. So luckily for me, I've had this car now for a year and the mileage on my car is just over 2000. So I don't have to worry about rev restrictions and all of that kind of running in stuff. Damien, on the other hand, does. So he has got to stick to this fairly religious 600 miles. Don't over rev it. Don't rev line it too much. You know, kind of keep the revs up and down all the time until the car's bedded in. Which means that I'm going to have a bit of fun with him on these roads because obviously I don't have any problems like that. He's the one that's going to have to keep backing off and not be able to sustain it. So this should be a lot of fun. So we're going to, just going to hang back a little bit from the cars in front so we can give it some beanage. Because let's face it, beanage is what we're all here for, isn't it? So we're going to go down into second and then we're going to... Um, oh yeah, look, he's nice and close. He knows, he knows what's going on. He knows that we're going to go for some beanage. 
Now Jason's pulling back a little bit on this road and I suspect that's because he wants to give it some beans. And it is. Whoa. Oh my God. I mean, this thing absolutely flies, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. Bit of heel and toe, second gear. It's only a 1.6 engine turboed, but that combined with that four wheel drive just delivers magic. <laughs> That's a good little road. It's nice when you can string a couple of corners together like that. Really, really good fun. He's got a big grin on his face. I can see him smiling from ear to ear. Honestly, he's going to love this car. It is so good. If you missed out on an allocation, get yourself out, get yourself a second hand one. Or phone every dealership that you know and hopefully you can get a cancelled order. But frankly, if people are cancelling these orders, then they need to have a very, very good look at themselves. The gear stick is raised up quite high, so it's easy to change gears, and it's quite a solid feeling object. There's a lot of confidence there as you change gears. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go slow again, and he's got a big grin on his face. We're going to have a little bit more beanage. Oh, I think he's at it again. I think he's at it again. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three, beans. That turbo. I've got to be careful, obviously, because you're not really supposed to super rev a brand new car from new. You're supposed to take it easy for about the first 600 miles. Jason doesn't have that problem, so he's enjoying all 7,000 RPM, whereas I have to cut it short. But it's only 600 miles, and I have no doubt that I will probably get through that in the first week of ownership. The other great thing about this car is the stopping power is phenomenal. The brakes on this are bigger than on the GR Supra. That's, that's how good it is. Now this is of course not my first rodeo. In fact, I picked up another new car just very recently, the Lotus Elise. And it's interesting to note that the ordering process and amount of communication and the handover day has been quite different. Even though this car has also been delayed, like the Elise, so it was originally supposed to be February and we're now in September. The communication was constant. I was always kept informed as to what was happening with the car and apologies, etc. And in terms of the handover day itself, very pleasant. We got the we got a special bamboo key case that you keep the uh, key spare key and the main key in. So a really nice sort of Japanese item. We've also got this Ishu thing, this special crazy Japanese cuddly toy which has been specially created for the GR Yaris customers and everything about the actual process of picking up the car was extremely friendly and professional. The syncing with the My Toyota app wasn't seamless so I might have to do that again and it's only got about half a tank of fuel which is a little bit of a surprise. At least Lotus gave me a full tank and we certainly want to pitch a GR Yaris against the Talbot Lotus Sunbeam and compare a classic rally car with a more modern one. So I think that will be a really special episode, hopefully. Here we go, watch him. That's interesting, and he's not allowed to use all the revs, so he can't quite keep up. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. That's fantastic fun, that is. I love that. But now I've got a long journey ahead of me to get back to the Car Guys HQ. I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. And I'm loving my first day's ownership with the GR Yaris. So there you go, guys. New car day. The new GR Yaris joins the Car Guys garage next to Jason's white one. Hope you like the episode. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. Don't forget to tune into the next episode of The Car Guys, where I will be making a non-appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in two months. Obvious-ish. So there'll be another episode next week without him. <laughs> Probably. Very rarely without him. There'll be this. another episode yes. of Damien moaning about Ferrari <laughs> customer service. next week. <laughs> moaning about customer service, this time in a little. <laughs>